Air sealing and insulating are essential at the rim joist connection in basements and conditioned crawl spaces, as the rim joist is the junction between many various building components, such as the mud sill, the interior framing, the subfloor, and the exterior sheathing. A range of different air sealing and insulation strategies can be used at the rim joist, such as closed cell spray foam, rigid insulation and sealants, and taped smart vapor retarder membranes. In this video, we're going to discuss three different strategies that you can use to air seal and insulate your rim joist connection. The first strategy that we can use to air seal and insulate the rim joist connection is to spray a continuous layer of closed cell polyurethane spray foam from the level of the foundation wall or stem wall and up onto the rim joist, ensuring that we have a good fillet, and then up onto the underside of the decking to ensure that we have one continuous air seal. Remember, those subfloor joints are not airtight unless they're taped. This strategy is really useful for hard to reach areas or in retrofits that have limited access, such as in narrow crawl spaces. In addition to the spray foam, we want to make sure that we have a sill gasket between the pressure treated mud sill and the concrete foundation wall and we're sealing that sill gasket at the top and bottom with continuous beads of sealant and that further prevents air leakage as well as bugs that might find a path through there. Ants and termites love to burrow into foam and especially damp foam and so we want to close off those pathways to the closed cell spray foam from the outside. We also want to make sure that we're specifying an airtight weather resistive barrier. Here we're calling out a self-adhered product and this self-adhered WRB is essentially bonded to the substrate of the sheathing which provides provides significantly better resistance to water entry as well as air leakage. Air can't pass through any of the joints in the sheathing. Then we want to come back with a fluid applied flashing at the base of the wall to seal off this sensitive connection. When we're dealing with concrete to wood framing connections, we need something that is compatible with both materials, the WRB, and that is flexible enough to bridge the connection. We could also use a compatible flashing and air sealing tape with a primer like Sega Fentrum or Tescon Vana from Proclima. Now one thing you need to be aware of with spray foam, we're learning some pretty nasty things about spray foam. We know that rapid expansion and contraction of the wood framing can cause spray foam to crack because closed cell foam is rigid and if that occurs this essentially violates the integrity of the air barrier and if moisture is deposited back here through air leakage it's going to have a harder time drying out and it could support rot especially in those colder climates where we have a condensation risk. We're also learning that it off gases some pretty nasty chemicals even long after it's installed so we want to make sure that we're being very careful about using spray foam as an air seal and even consider moving away from it. So if you want to avoid spray foam, our next option is to use air sealed rigid foam insulation like EPS, GPS, XPS, or polyiso. Now, the rigid foam insulation boards themselves are quite airtight. It's the joints and seams that we have to air seal with either air sealing tapes or elastomeric sealants. Over here, you see that the rim joist has been insulated with a piece of rigid XPS insulation, which is cut to size for every joist bay, and then we're sealing the joints around the insulation with sealant. You could use an expanding foam seal or you could use a fiber reinforced joint and seam filler, which I tend to prefer in most cases. Prosico makes a fantastic joint and seam filler compound that allows for a lot more flexibility and movement, and we don't have to worry about the expanding foam sealant cracking. Again, if that expanding foam sealant cracks, we lose its integrity as an air barrier. Now, we want to make sure that the thickness of the rigid foam and any other insulation at the rim joist provides the same R value as the exterior walls above, and that it follows the recommended insulation ratios to prevent condensation. We could use a combination of rigid foam and bat insulation. Here we're calling out rock wool comfort bat, or we could use all rigid foam, which would probably be about four or four and a half inches of rigid foam. So it depends on the exterior wall system you've designed and the climate zone you're building in. On the opposite side of the foundation wall, we're calling out an adhered flashing membrane or air sealing tape over the layers of rigid foam insulation and connecting it to the top of the concrete foundation wall. And then all of the joints of the insulation boards are sealed with air sealing tape. So wherever we see seams, we want to take it so that air can't leak in and condense on this cold foundation wall. Finally, this last strategy is a completely foam-free option for insulating and air sealing rim joists for those who want to avoid spray foam and rigid foam products. Instead, we're using a combination of that self-adhered weather-resistive barrier on the exterior and that fluid applied flashing or flashing tape at the sill to provide that exterior air seal. And then on the interior, we're calling out a taped smart vapor retarder membrane to prevent vapor diffusion into the wall cavity, as well as air leakage from passing through that could result in condensation on the foundation walls or on the rim joist. And this 
allows us to use a wider range of insulation products in isolation, like mineral wool, fiberglass, wood fiber, or cellulose. And so we're taping and sealing that smart vapor retarder membrane to each floor joist with air sealing tape. So if we were to look at this in a 3D perspective, this is what it looks like. The membrane is cut and stapled to the joists, and then that air sealing tape is installed all the way around and up onto the underside of the subfloor. Now, this strategy is a little bit more labor intensive since it requires that each joist is meticulously taped to prevent air leakage. Now, unlike a standard polyethylene vapor barrier, a smart vapor retarder membrane allows the walls to dry to the interior if moisture gets inside, instead of trapping the moisture. That's the whole point of a smart vapor retarder. It prevents vapor diffusion inwards, but allows moisture to dry out when relative humidity within the wall cavity exceeds about 60%. So if there is any residual construction moisture in the cavity, or for some reason we get air leakage that results in condensation, it can still dry out to the interior. We can then insulate the rim joist with just a standard mineral wool bat or any other bat insulation, so there's a lot more flexibility when it comes to insulating. You can also see back here that we're insulating with rigid mineral wool to provide a thermal break between the cold foundation walls and the framed walls beyond. It doesn't matter if this rigid insulation is airtight or not since we're providing air tightness at the smart vapor control layer. So our thermal control continuity is provided at the foundation walls, up to the rim joist, and up through the exterior walls above. Then over the smart vapor retarder, we can install horizontal 2x3 furring for an airtight service cavity for our electrical conduit, and then we can fasten our standard gypsum board to that. Now, there are other ways to accomplish this. If we had a layer or layers of rigid insulation installed on the exterior of the assembly that were at a sufficient thickness to warm the condensing surface of the sheathing, we could actually wrap the membrane over the mud sill and up around the rim joist and over the subfloor prior to the insulation of the exterior sheathing. This does require some extra work during construction sequencing to get right, but this allows us to avoid having to tape each individual floor joist. So that's another way to accomplish the same outcome if you want to ditch the foam. For more information on air sealing and insulating building assemblies, head over to asiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles on a wide range of topics from foundations to wall assemblies to flat roofs. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.